Listening to Strange Familiars, True Stories of the Paranormal, Cryptids, Hauntings, The Occult, Mythology, UFOs, Folklore, Weird and Forgotten History. Please make sure to like and subscribe to Strange Familiars on iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube, or wherever you are listening. Please share the Strange Familiars page and episodes on Facebook and other social media. If you have experienced something strange, or if you know a story you would like us to cover, email strangefamiliarspodcast at gmail.com or find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars and of course, strangefamiliars.com. Welcome to Strange Familiars, Allison. Episode 400, we made it. (laughs) Uh, The... The odd self-congratulatory tone to that as if we, like, run a marathon and we... (laughs) I'm hearing the sort of chariots of fire music. Well, hey. I mean, it is an accomplishment. And if I said to you, like, hey, what was episode 272? You would say the same thing as me. I have no idea. Yeah, I'd say go to the website and look it up. (laughs) I remember the first episode pretty clearly. Do you really? I do, actually. I wasn't involved in it, but I remember being, I think I was in the same room as when you recorded it. It took so long. It took so long to make. I remember thinking, is every episode going to be like this? Because I'm just trying to, I'm figuring out how to put it together. Mm-hmm. And I guess, the answer is yes. <laughs> not really. No, I got much faster. That first episode was a bear. But uh, yeah, I, I just, you know, anything you do over and over again, you learn tricks and shortcuts and ways to uh, get it done quicker. I have no clue how many podcasts have made it to 400 episodes. I mean, there are a lot of podcasts that started before us. And yeah. I'm sure there are plenty. And how many episode, like patron episodes are there? There are over a hundred, right? Oh yeah. So we must. Yeah. So there must be over five hundred episodes. Well, I started numbering the patron episodes with the other ones at some point. So yeah. there's like, I want to say twenty or thirty that weren't numbered. So yeah, we're we're well over four hundred, really. But there's four hundred numbered episodes. Oh, okay. That's what we're going by. Yeah, I wonder what percentage of podcasts make it to I mean, like four hundred episodes. It'd be interesting to find out. I look at like Sasquatch Chronicles. He's so far ahead of us. You know, he's got so many. Soraya didn't even ever number his. So I don't think he has any clue how many he's done. And for a while, he was doing I think two a week. Yeah. So there's yeah. probably way mo- way more. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Four hundred. Time flies. I feel like we need a treat. <laughs> we do. We do need a treat. So I was trying to think what we could do for this episode, and I thought, well. 300 is the witch cloud. Yeah. And I found a little legend that was right there. It was right by Saks Bridge. After I was done with the witch cloud, I found this. And I thought, oh, that's irritating. Because I really wanted to include it in the book and mm-hmm. you know, make it part of that. It's a legend about a witch tree. Probably one of these things is just 
a legend, just not true. It's mm-hmm. a woman who, there's different versions of the story, but it, she's basically hanged as a witch and she curses the town or something. Supposedly you can see her face in that tree. I think she was hanged from that tree. It's a little legend. And this is in Gettysburg? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, some people say that there's a name, other people say, you know, no one can really tell you any real information mm-hmm. that, that could you could look up and confirm this. But it is one of those legends, like Suicide Bridge, that's like, well, if people come there, enough people come there believe in this stuff, does that do something? Does that create something? And does it add to the sort of energy of the witch cloud that's there? And it's also interesting that there's a witch tree, an existing legend, mm-hmm. in the area that we dubbed the witch cloud, mm-hmm. not knowing that. So back in December, on a very cold night, Chad and I went to check out this witch tree and to revisit the bridges. Then, just the other day, we met in Hex Hollow and sat around on some rocks <laughs> and talked about it. This whole segment of the show coming up here is on site. It's on site at the bridges and at the witch tree, mm-hmm. and it's on site at Hex Hollow where we're discussing it. Before we get to the witch tree recordings, I want to thank our patrons. 400 episodes. No way we could have made it here without you. No, not at all. Thank you so much. If you like what we do and you want to hear more Strange Familiars, you can become a patron at Patreon. It's patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. All of our patrons get commercial-free versions of the weekly episodes, plus extra episodes every month. We try to do two. Sometimes it's one. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's more than two. Whatever we can do for our patrons, we like to do. To check it out, go to patreon.com slash strangefamiliars. Check out all the options there. And once again, thank you, patrons. All right, let's go back to the bridges and check out the witch tree. You know what's interesting about this? And we sort of picked this randomly. But here in the 400th episode, this is where I recorded the first episode. That is funny. Yeah. I mean, the on-site audio part of it anyway. And I remember... Uh, I like that we're doing this, uh, like, outside. Maybe we should do this more often. I think it's kind of a nice change. Yeah, yeah. You know, that was the our whole thing. We just... Because we weren't, like, doing, like, a quote-unquote on-site recording so much as just, like having the discussion part of the episode, but we were just sitting around in the woods here in Hexal doing it. So, been over a year since the witch cloud. Episode 400. That was episode 300. I can't believe how fast 100 episodes go by. <laughs> I don't even, I can't even fathom. When did I come in? 190? 160? One, I thought it was in the 170s, but anyway, somewhere anyway, around there. Anyway, I just yeah. can't believe I've been with you this long now. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it it feels like a very shorter time yeah to yeah. be honest so it's kind of beat my head up against the wall like what can we do for episode 400 and there certainly wasn't time to do another witch cloud you know that took us no that's that's a took us a couple years like people don't yeah i think our original goal was to do that for 200 we had started it that early and then we were like we'll never finish this for no. 200 no and we kept working on it and it, it came out for 300 so yeah it takes a long time to put something like that together and I unfortunately because we haven't started anything I don't think I can do it for 500 either but we'll see maybe we'll come up I don't with even something. think we intended it for it to be that big it just it grew and grew it was a random yeah. visit and then it went from there yeah well we went back so I missed something big I missed something big there a little story about a witch tree and I'm very upset that it didn't make my book. But, yeah, there's so many legends Wait, around there. It's like your hermit book. You can't just, you know, you have to you have to cut it out somewhere. To, and, and at some point you have to hit publish, right? Yes. You know? But th- there's a story of this witch tree that's right near Saks Bridge. And we figured we'd go there. So this was back in December. It was pretty cold. I think it was in the, in the 20s. And I don't remember exactly, but it was cold. In this first clip, we start at Saks Bridge, and we visit the witch tree, and then we walk to Eisenhower Bridge. Oh, 
We're back at Saks Bridge. Yeah, 12, or it's December 9th, 2022. Always gotta make that date. Here to record the uh, Witch Cloud anniversary show, and I realized there was a there was a story we missed. It was right by these bridges, and in fact, we went back here one night as part of the Witch Cloud. We walked back this trail, and I didn't know this legend yet. Is it here? No, nope, not here. No, it's first thing. What is this legend, Tim? The legend of a witch tree. Now, not the witch tree that... Just looking at the prints, people prints. Not the witch tree in my neighborhood growing up, but another witch tree. This looks like it here, maybe. Maybe? This is it, right here. Yeah. Yep, you can see where people walk up to it all the time. Yeah, so this... Supposedly, a woman was hanged from this tree. One of the versions of the tale, I don't think it's the only version, but one of the versions of the tale said she was in love with a Native American man and he was killed by people in town. And his body was hidden somewhere, supposedly. Yeah, and she, uh, she cursed the town. I guess she was a witch and then she was hanged on this tree and there's a knot on this tree can you get a picture of that? If we yeah. uh, the knot on this tree that they say, you, what when it rains you can see you a, can see the skull, see your skull or a skull. I don't put too much stock in these kinds of local legends as far as there being any truth to them. But again, we have the kind of thing where have people put enough energy into this legend where something develops here kind of like the idea of the hanged soldiers or the hanged yeah. people on, on suicide bridge. So once again, you have more hung people. Yeah, more more people that were suppo that wasn't close to here. supposedly hanged. I think I recall when we came here, ghost groups coming here and I remember seeing lights flashing up here. Yeah, I now bet I you're right. Why. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, somebody left a rose here. Plastic rose. Yeah. I think it's a big old sycamore. Based on the leaf litter and the way the bark is, I think it's an old sycamore tree. Mm. Yeah, it looks like it, the way the bark strips off the, yeah. the branches like that. Yeah. These things get so big, people used to live in them. So much around there? Is there is there a way to go back further or not? It looks like a game trail, maybe. It's yeah, like we'll it. go out to the main trail. Yeah. So the, the other question is, does this this being here add to the general woo factor of right. Suicide Bridge and, and, and Saks Bridge and, and everything else? Well, you actually have a witch. Yeah. For witch cloud. Yeah, exactly. Which, you didn't pick it because of that, but it's quite... Uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's a little bit of a synchronicity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here's your witch for the witch cloud. <laughs> yeah, the one I thought I mined every story around this place, but I, I missed one. Like I said, it's it's one of those probably unprovable local legends which is doubtful, but again, I don't know how much that matters anymore. I think people bring so much to these legends that they start. Well, and why hang her here? Of all places. Why here? Right. Yeah. Why this particular tree? Yeah. I just think it's like you got... Why not from the bridge? <laughs> well, definitely if it was a, a uh, Iroquois man, like the legend says, it would have had to been 1700s, I'm guessing. Yeah. You might as well just keep going. Boy, Chad, these wool gloves are much better than my old ones. <laughs> what did you have? I can't remember. Just some kind of hiking glove, they call it, like a winter hiking glove. It's probably more like a liner, really, than it was a... Oh, yeah, and then I had leather, just leather gloves, too. 
It was. I didn't give the, those wool gloves to you, did I? No, no, I ordered these. Oh, and your suggestion. Last time, I, I think last time we were out, I was like, man, my hands are cold. You said, you need some wool gloves. You know what's really warm? Is if you use mittens. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't you have the kind that, like, the mitten part flips down and then... Yep. Yeah, that, that's, I was going to get those, but these had the grips on them. I kind of like the idea of the... What I do is I actually wear fingerless gloves, fingerless wool gloves, which are actually wool liners. Uh-huh. And then I throw a wool mitten over top of them. I don't mind taking the time just to yeah. pull them over. You know what I mean? So you get double the uh, warmth out of it. Yeah. No, it's not trying to make us walk in the dark. <laughs> I don't want to blind you. I'm walking behind you. I can use your light mostly. The woods are like luminescent. Oh, it's moss. It has like a weird sheen to it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. If it gets too much, I'll turn my headlamp on, but for right now, I can use yours. I'm not going too far. Which reaches out further than mine anyway. You said you got that at Home Depot? Yeah, yeah. the Home Depot headlamp. <laughs> yeah, I might have to just stop and get one. I'm yeah. tired of buying ones off of Amazon. They work for 15 minutes. It's like you adjust it like that, too. You can make it wide or take it in tight. Yeah, I like that. And it has three settings, and it's easy to get to the red lights. It eats batteries though, because it's so powerful. Yeah, I don't mind that as long as I can see. I don't mind replacing batteries. I think we went back in. We went further back than this for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's just not this bad. Yeah, not worth the price of admission. Not today, no. It was a, a cold night like this on November when we had all those weird knocks on the bridge. Remember that? I think so. It yeah. Was this cold. It's cold and everybody else gets upset and we rejoice. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, it got to be so to the point where uh, we couldn't couldn't have any alone time at all on the bridge. You know, it's just yeah. I think it's the first time I've been out here in like a long time that there's like nobody here. Yeah. Now you want to walk over to? Oh yeah, absolutely. All right, let's do that. It was a time where I trusted my balance enough, believe it or not, to walk across that. I trust my balance, I just don't trust the freaking water not to sweep me off. Yeah. Will we go around that way? How do we do this? Did we go around this? Yeah. We did not. We go around it. Yeah. Yeah, we must have come this way. Yep, I remember that can. We went that way. Yep. See. I'm just reading some of the graffiti. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so we're actually crossing Saks Bridge now for the listeners. Let me make sure. Still recording? Yep. We're actually crossing Saks Bridge. And we're going to walk on over to Eisenhower Bridge. The most non haunted bridge in Gettysburg. What, Saks? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, you did have something happen here. Lost, must have lost it. Yeah. Your left or lost it? Little cross. There's a little bit of noise there, I heard. Oh, a little creek. Animal of some sort. Those are there now. Mm. God, how many times did we walk this? I way? know, I know. Look, 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 look. That's what oh, I'm yeah, doing. it's a heron. Yeah. And that, he might scream at us when we walk by. Now this will be the second one we've scared. Yeah. That's what her big blue heron. Yeah. I think he'll just hold still. Oh, there he goes. They're not nocturnal, right? Uh, I don't think so, typically. No, maybe we scared them up over there or something. Or I don't know how good their night vision is. You know, yeah. They hunt during the day. Oh, 
don't usually usually get that close to them. Honestly, they don't. I've tried to get pictures of them and Just, stuff. We're in a witch pile. Yeah. <laughs> we're passing through some falls. It's been what a year since the book was released. Yeah, I looked on. Uh, I guess the official release date was Christmas last year. Okay. Some people got it before then, but the official technical release date was Christmas. So. We. Yeah. We know where the road goes. Yeah. Soraya, we know where the road goes. Yeah. Where's the road go? <laughs> to the Iron Bridge. But no, but that was what, two years of work. Oh yeah. Oh so yeah. This has been so this would technically be four years. No. Three or four years when we started. Yeah. On that journey. Yep. Because we did all the research and all that is all that evening stuff, all the field work. Yeah. Up to when you finished writing it, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, in the times we've been here since, oh, yeah. it's just been so busy. This is probably the emptiest it's been for a long time. Yeah. Now, is that just the weather, or do the ghost tours not start up yet? I think it's the weather. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, it is. So, we're looking at a moon just rising. So, it's got a beautiful orangish glow. And it's just starting to come through the trees. Couldn't ask for a better night. No. No, I think it's the first time we've had all this to ourselves in a long time. Yeah. Some of it's the weather. Yeah, I guess we're on in the out of uh, peak tourism season now too, so there's gonna be less ghost well, tours. It's on Christmas, but most people don't want to do a ghost tour in twenty seven degree weather. True. It's supposed to drop down in the twenties tonight. It's already below freezing. Is it? Yeah. You want some light or not? I know we're okay so far. I mean, I can barely see, but I'm, like I said, I know where the road is. Yeah, I'm good. Once the moon rises, it'll be really nice. If it was a rough trail, I'd be worried about it, but we're... All right, just don't let me walk into that, those signs. Actually, we're coming up on it. So, for those listeners who don't know, my night vision is superior to his. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, partly has to do with that MS attack I had. That and your ears are better than mine. They used to be. I'm starting to question that, Chad. On the last couple things, on-site things we've done. We got, we got one more set of blocks up here. Though. Yeah. Last couple on-site things we've done, you, you've heard something. And I've been with you. I've been like, what? And then when I went back to listen to the recording, like, oh, there it is. That's exactly what he was talking about. I don't know if that's so much my ears are better. I mean, just I was paying more attention that. that yeah, time maybe time. just tuned in more. I always get the heebie-jeebies when I come down here. Yeah, the mood absolutely changes through here. My last time here wasn't so bad, and there was nobody here that night either. Believe it or not. Though when you were here with Caleb and yeah. the. Really, in the summer? Yes. Or, well, no, early fall. fall yeah. yeah. There wasn't a soul here. Wow. That's Siren. Yeah. I'm trying to find out, figure out if it was Coyote or Siren. Yeah, it's real fire truck. Yeah, last time here we actually saw a beaver of all things. Got geese going off behind us, got fire trucks. There's a light over here. Come here. Come where I am. Look like a flashlight or like a flashlight. Uh, yeah, I thought I saw it too. It was dead ahead. Yeah, I, I thought I was seeing a car or a 
house, or, but there aren't any houses over yeah, there. It's the fuel. Yeah, I forget about that. It's pretty bright too. Yeah, it was as bright as those ones off over there, which are houses. And it's definitely a fog. There's, there's the cold spot right here. See it? <laughs> yeah. My hands got instantly cold. It's cold here, yeah. Yeah, like walk into the spot. It's definitely fog. You're the light in there. Oh, is that not trespassing sign? That'll do it. Oh, you see a little glint. <clears throat> yeah. Those are new. It's better no trespassing sign. What? Where? The beaver. Oh, where is he? He's right there. <laughs> on the other side of the bank there? Yeah. Here, let me get the other flashlight on him. <laughs> Come here and hear chewing. It's a beaver. Yeah, I got a little beaver here. He's a, he's a new addition. Man, my light just does not reach out the way yours does. He won't do it. He won't yeah, I just want to look at it. Get a closer look. He's gotten bigger since the last song. There are two of them? There's another one. The whole family here now. Where's the other one? Right here in the bank. Up there? Can't see can't see through my breath. Oh, okay. Kind of in the in the. I'm convinced. I'm convinced. Caleb and Ryan brought them down <laughs> from Canada. Canada. <laughs> it's so funny. They've been sliding down the bank. See the slide. Yep. That's a big one. So you know they are relatively new because all the time we've been here. Yeah. That's just my flashlight. They don't care. Yeah, no, they're not worried about us. funny thing about that is the beavers <laughs> yeah which were super cute but before anyone says anything about clicks and pops in our old recordings they weren't there before no the beavers were not in that area before this is a novel thing they, yeah this yeah. this is just something that has recently happened i would say that was it that october or the october before when i was there with caleb and it was ryan the previous one yep yeah yep so that they're relatively new additions to that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Caleb brought him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you didn't see him till you were with him. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I still think it's their fault. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, they weren't there before. So before anyone says, "Oh, you've been hearing beavers the whole time," we were not. No, they're not there before. We've been out there so many times. We're familiar with everything. That said, you can hear the beavers chewing throughout these two clips. These, yeah, these first two and, clips. The click, and the clicks and pops we heard there before sound completely different right. than the beaver chewing. Right, and we'll get to another interesting click and pop later. But the in that first recording, there's an owl that we didn't catch at the time. It's not e super easy to hear, but I did catch it when I was listening through. So there was an owl sounding off on the bridge for us. So I'll go ahead and just play that clip.
here's part two. We're still on Eisenhower Bridge. And then we walk back through the cold spot again. Yep. Hearing the sound, yeah. <laughs> See if we can get a tail slap. <laughs> oh, they might slap then. Yeah, we'll find out. Yeah. I was trying to see if there was more than one. Or, or Others on the other side, yeah. Yeah, that's just them too. Cute little buggers. See if the pandemonium springs down here. Chad is descending beneath the bridge to check on uh, something we left here. Hand me my walking stick, will you? Yep. I guess I shouldn't say beneath the bridge. That gives it away. Nobody's gonna find it. They don't know what they're looking for. True enough. Interesting. Well, I guess we can talk about it then. So we had left the the spring that was twisted into my paracord at Pandemonium under the bridge here as a sort of uh, gifting thing, sort of present, sort of just uh, yeah. see what happens. And uh, it's been there for for a long time. At least a year. And then, year and a half, something like that. Yeah, and and it it is no longer there. I left a piece of quartz <clears> from. Uh, where was the quartz from? I got think. I think the quartz was from Hex Hollow. Yes. Yeah. So that's gone too. Oh, really? Both things are gone. Yep, both Interesting. Are gone. Now you know. Certainly could have been people's, but. People. I mean, I don't know. Did the water get high enough here to wash something like that away? It would have had to come up all the way up under the abutment up here, though. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it has before, but has it recently? I don't, you I know. Don't know. Yeah, I don't know if we've gotten any. Man, whatever's going on is very big. Yeah, sirens won't stop. I thought I smelled, uh, honestly, tobacco again. I thought I smelled. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but I don't think I'd do that. I think it's just. That's a new theme. Nah. Well, I guess since we're a year out from the book being published, what are your impressions? Have they changed, I guess? Of, what do you mean? Of this area of the bridge since since, since uh, having... What, is it scary? Or we, we, like, no, what, I mean, what, like, what have, exactly is your question? I'm trying to get have you, you has your Have your feelings changed about it, or do you still feel the same? I still think there's something here. Yeah. Um... doesn't seem to like I always want to come back here mm -hmm. still yeah and it doesn't seem to like affect us like the first time we were here when I got really sick yeah and I know it wasn't COVID no what not yeah. no so no. it's just I mean I still get like when I was there I, did, I didn't feel good standing there mm -hmm. in that spot like my stomach felt queasy yeah and it felt weird so I don't know if it's because we've been here enough. We know it. I mean, I'm just... I don't know. Mm -hmm. I still... I still think it's definitely an active spot. Yeah, I was, this is definitely one of the places I would recommend people come if we, they were in Gettysburg. We, we came here with... When I came here with the Canadians, they were like... They weren't like this was it, but they were like, they expected it to be, I don't know. I don't know what they were expecting. I, I think, to me, it felt like they like they were just like, this isn't in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and I'm like, it, it doesn't have to be. Right, yeah. But it still feels isolated, you know, compared to other places. 
but it, it, it's kind of like an old friend now. There you go. That's the best way to describe it. Because I've been here so much, yeah. so often. Yeah. Like I go to Kazoo's Woods, it always feel Kazoo's always feels a little odd. And then this this feels kind of. I was talking about that on on Discord. Some people were asking me, like somebody's like. You know, I was under the impression that you guys kind of like had one place you went to, Site 7. He's like, you got a bunch of places you go to. I was like, yeah. And they were asking me, like, well, how do they differ? And I was like, well, it's hard to really say. Yeah, it is. They're, but they're like, the same, like, but they're different. Pandemonium. Oh, Pandemonium. For sure, whatever's Oof. there wants to count coup. It wants to let you know that <laughs> it, <Yeah. laughs> it lives there and it can come into your campsite whenever it wants. You're not stopping it from doing anything. Uh, yeah. It's going to do what it does. And you're just visiting. <laughs> you are there under that place. You are there under its own rules. Yeah. I mean, it just. See, now it's changed. See, now everything kind of closed up. Uh-huh. Since I said it was like an old friend, now it's like, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm getting that too. <laughs> It's almost like when I was looking through it a second ago, it was like clear. Now it's like, like the gates closed, and it's yep. like, yep, now you got to come through this. Yep. <laughs> like the traps have been set. We the minefields been, yeah, it's, been put down, and we got to go it's back through. Very all that. much like the witch cloud has de- has descended. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like literally, like look through the woods through just the mist. I, know. I mean, there was mist here, but it's just yeah. funny how it just like it just became very apparent. Yeah. Like I feel comfortable here but not there yeah that that f- and it feels encroaching mm-hmm. like it really does that's it's what like, i was saying yeah yeah pandemonium is like <laughs> this is beavers are going to town i know it's just funny pandemonium is just like it's own a monster it's mm-hmm. an animal so now i just saw a shadow move near i so messed up so this place is comfortable, but yet it still has the ability to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah. I, I, don't get too comfortable. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. What's your impression of it now? Since you Very similar. Yeah. Like, when I was here with Sarai, it was completely dead. Didn't feel anything. I think that's the last time I was back b- mm-hmm. before now. And, and now getting those old feelings again. I think some of it is is because there's not that many people here. Yeah, yeah. Like we said before, the more people you have, the less that goes on. Yeah, like it's it's got more to draw from, so it's got it has it doesn't have to has to work as hard. Have to work as hard. Yeah. Are you ready to head back? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. All right. Goodbye, beavers. And here we go. I'm up on the bank. They're working on a tree now. <laughs> Be interesting to come back in a couple months and see how the landscape yes. has changed. Yep. Heard something over there. Right over there? Yeah. Could have been an animal. Just noting that I heard something. It's like quiet waiting. Yeah. I feel like I'm being watched. But... Do you think whatever's here recognizes us by now? I don't know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if those things are capable of that. Yeah. Well, I think some are. I think it depends. Ooh, dang, it's cold here. Right here. Yep. Now, we're not near the creek. No. And, and it's not like it's a low spot. No, we're well away from the creek. This is, is that you? I thought I heard some movement over there. That's where I thought. I mean, that side. Yeah, it could be an animal. Yeah, yeah, it could be moving around in there. Man. Yeah, so what's going on in Gettysburg? I don't know. It's almost like that there's anticipation, but it, it, it just can't quite do what it wants to do watch the things here yep Does that make sound odd no I can 
it's almost like the times we come here and we walk it's like we're doing a journey mm -hmm. to this place and it's almost like I smell fire yeah that could be from that's from the house that's probably from somebody's fireplace it was cold yeah but anyways are we putting ourselves in like a state I don't want to say trance like state but like yeah no I get what you're saying like yeah you know, you, you almost know. like a ritual kind of thing like, yeah, yeah yeah like us walking yeah to the place I don't want to say a pilgrimage that's not the right word no but, but it's I, like yeah it's like like a, a journey like, like a little like a little ritual like us doing that maybe amps it up a little bit you know like, Absolutely could like be. People, you know, ancient peoples would have those, well, even now, people have those meditation labyrinths mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So is us walking, putting us in, like, a certain state of mind? I can definitely see that. We sort of almost make a, a, a circuit back and forth between these yeah, two bridges. I mean, yeah, All those nights. Yeah. It wouldn't... I mean, we we did what sometimes four times. Yeah, easy. Yeah, five times, yeah, three, back, four and times forth back and forth between yeah. the two bridges. So was it, were we? I mean, we had stuff happen with us just pulling up and getting out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. But does that add to it? That just popped in my mind. I mean, what do you think? Well. Like I said, I mean, part of the theory of the witch cloud is that people bring stuff here, and we're people, and we're certainly bringing stuff yeah. here, you know? And it's nothing we do on purpose. And yeah, but, no. And we're just doing a walk yeah. to just see what we experience. But, I mean, we, we are here because of the weird stories, you know? Exactly. I mean, we are here because of the ghost stories, because of the uh, legends, whatever you want to call them. I mean... So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're bringing... We're bringing stuff too, you know. Now, the first time I was here and I had all that stuff happen, I had no idea about that place. None. And at, I reacted really strongly. Oh, here at, at suicide. At, yeah. Yeah, at the bridge. Yeah, yeah. The Iron Bridge. Yeah. I mean, because in fact, like, I had kind of written it off, you know, at that point. I was kind of like, did. yeah, I've been here before. I and don't you know. You didn't really tell me much. Yeah. When we came here, and I had no idea where it even was. And I had all that, and I didn't know any of the history, I didn't know anything at all, and I just had such a bad reaction. So now, why can I come here and be semi-okay? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's because... It got used to you, you got used to it, some of both. vice versa. Yeah. You know. Like, I always say, like, pandemonium, I've been there so many times with and without you right and I know that place and I just know what it's going to do. I don't want to say I know what it's going to do but I know because I don't really know what it's going to do but because it changes You're right straight down there uh -huh. okay you see the one tree or we have this telephone pole on this side right then you go down it looks like two telephone poles side yeah. by side yeah and then you go to the right a little bit the edge of the road or it looks like a little tree that's up yep off to the right of that was a little yellow, like flickers in there. Mm. Okay, back in the dark. Yeah, yeah. So I don't, I don't think there's a house there because the, I don't the think road so turns. either. I yeah. think that's the woods where the creek is. Yeah, that would be my estimation. We're looking down into that, into the where it drops. Yeah, because we're going down on the crest of the hill. Just kind of keep your eyes along that way. Yeah. But what were you saying? I'm sorry. Whatever it is in Hex Hollow wants reaction. Yep. And I think I think it's very old. You've said that about this place too. Yeah, whatever's here is old. Yeah, but it's that's my feeling in Hex it's Hollow too. Really it's whatever's old. there is way older than Raymire. It's way old, way older than the Hex yeah. murders. They might be a symptom of whatever's going on there, but whatever's there was longer there longer than this and whatever's that. here is it was way before the Civil War. You think so? Yeah. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But you were saying Kadoris, I kind of feel like it's like 
almost like Hex Hollow's like little brother or something. Like even the furnace. <laughs> no, Kador State Park. Okay. Okay. It, it's like a similar feeling, but it doesn't have the same. I think that's because Kador's has been a little tamed. Yeah. Compared to that, because it's you know it's developed more. Right. Right. There's. Definitely, you know, more traffic around, more people. It's been changed. Um, Go through there. I think. I think you know the landscape has been changed there drastically, in the last. Oh God, forty years. Yeah. When they made the lake, I'd like to have seen what was there. When the town was there, when when those hollows and all that were still there. Now, these aren't hard and fast definitions, by the way. This is just kind of like no, impressions, no. and any of these things can go in any direction yeah, <laughs> at we're any just, time. We're just, we're just we're discussing. Yeah. Uh, Toad Road is... That's an odd one. Yeah, it's odd. It's, it's... <laughs> I've never gotten a good handle on it, exactly. Like, Hex Hollow... I don't know what to expect because it can give you stuff you, like that'll shock you at any yeah. time, but I feel like there's a, a little bit more of an understanding there. And Toad Road, I'm just like, it's like always like, what is going to happen? Like, there's no. It's a little wilder. Yeah, now, like... and we'll see if that changes now that it's accessible to people. Pandemonium is just that is just like I said that's you that's, can't even classify that my, that beast my best impression like I said is it, it wants to count coup it wants to come oh, up does. to you and count coup every time and let you know I spent you're not the boss you are not the boss yeah man. yeah you're a visitor in that place yep absolutely that, yeah that's been it's something else like that I mean really <laughs> like like from from our story for our, the first time being there to almost every other one of your visits. Even when we were up in the cemetery that night. Yeah. Even during the day. It gets a little... During the day it gets a little off the hook. Yeah. It's never quiet there. There's always something going on. Whether you notice it or not, there's always some kind of activity there. Yeah. And then Michelle is just a different multifaceted, yeah. beautiful creature of weirdness. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't even classify that spot. Because it's just so much going on in those woods. Now, Site 7. Site 7, to, to me, is the most, like, fae-like of all the yeah. things in which you're going to get... It's playful when it wants to be playful. It'll let you know mm -hmm. when it doesn't want to be playful. I mean, again, what does that feel like? I don't know, but just it feels the most fae-like to me, the most, like, yeah. like just otherworldly. And, and we found out that there's stuff that that's been an old place. Yeah. You know, that there were people who went there legend tripping. You know, it's got its own legends that a lot of people have forgotten. Yep. You know, that Harry Springs is like that, too. Very fey like very, like... Yeah, and I, now I said, for my money, Harry Springs... Well, Pandemonium, too, but Harry Springs would be the place, if, in this show, at least, that I would say, like, say somebody probably has their best chance of actually seeing something. Like, yeah. like if I was a flesh and blood guy, that'd be the place where I'd be hanging out, like thinking like I got a good chance of seeing something here. And that, and that's a different it, it, that that place can just turn on you in a dime. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is very fake. Like, like with the whole thing with your knife there, you know, that's, that was that's total fake kind that of stuff. Was yeah, insane, insanity. That's the place that definitely turned my attention. Like, it definitely changed things for me because that was a wow day. I had experience. That was during the day too. Yeah. I had experience there before I really hung out with you. Like, the, the weekend after I met you, uh -huh. I had an experience there. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling and me. I didn't yeah. even realize it. Yeah. And that was the beginning. And then... Yeah, like, the, when we went there with Ken, I remember you saying, I, th I think this is where I was that day. And then you, as we drove there, you're like, yeah, this is where I was that day. And 
I remember you texted me. Noises and yeah. I was like, you know, oh, you know, this, this guy's just. In your head. <laughs> I was like, Tim's just in my head. Yo, I told myself this guy's got me hearing things now. I need to get over that. But yeah, that that place is definitely a, a, a marvel to itself too. You know, now, home, home show is really Pond Bank. The last time we were there was quiet. Didn't get the ceiling. But I've been there before where Pond Bank has upset me more than Harry Springs. Mm-hmm. And Pond Bank's right by a town. Again, it's one of these places that is right by a town. There's houses right there. But for some reason, I'd just be creeped out there. Last yeah. time we were there, not as much. Yeah. I never had nothing there, to be honest. Well, you don't get any. Nothing. I, I, see, I wonder if it's just because I recorded that Pond Bank groan there, if I'm expecting something more yeah. or, or, or what. I yeah. don't know. But for some reason... And again, not the last time we were there, but the time before we were there, I remember just being like, nah, I don't like this place. And, and White Rocks, to me, is not that bad. Uh, like, it, I go there still, and I, I don't expect anything to happen, but I always remember, and it's just like, you know, well, I know there's potential. Yeah. But that's another place that's visited a lot. Mm-hmm. And we've had some weird stuff up there, too. Yeah. Yeah, that, that solstice walk up there was something else. I think that's hit or miss. I think that's one of the spots, like, it's not always there, but when it's there, it's there. We were there at the right time that night. Yeah. I think I think it's either dead quiet or it's just off the hook. Harry Springs has always had this underlying current of weirdness and menace. Yeah. And like I said, Pandemonium's always got something going on. Yeah day, night, yeah. whatever, it's it's there. Yeah. It likes to count too. It definitely does. This place to me is dead. Sacks Bridge. Yeah, I think people have sucked the energy out of it in a way, you know? Ten million ghost tours are just as I hear something is going by. Yeah. We can, or you want to, what time is it? One thing we talked about in there, but we didn't highlight too much, I meant to talk about it more, is the missing spring, the missing pandemonium spring. Mm -hmm. So that was the spring that was wound onto the paracord that was holding up my pack. I still remember the moment when I untied that. I was so happy. You were looking at me. And yeah. you saw it come around with the spring <laughs> attached. And both of our eyes were just like super big. You were like, what? And I was just like, what is going on? That was like the cherry on top of that whole that whole trip. Yeah, <laughs> it was just so bizarre. And I was, But I was so happy you saw it happen. So you, like, there was no meat. Like, I didn't have to explain to you what happened. Like, no. You know, no. you saw it as it came around. Like, you, you saw it attached to the paracord. Wow. What a thing. But... We started, you know, partly on Brother Richard's advice and partly, I think you had kind of, you kind of had an intuition about this, about taking these gifts and then re-gifting them, mm-hmm. which is something Brother Richard said, you know, y- y- don't hang on to them forever, Re- you know, re-gift them, like move them along, which I think is a good idea. So we started doing that with some of these things. Yeah. And Pandemonium Spring was a big one, uh, you know, as far as a meaningful, exciting gift, you know. Yeah, you had that in your studio for a long time, too. Yeah, yeah, I had it. I have a sort of window filled up with different skulls I found that, that I felt were meaningful and, uh, rather than So just, it probably absorbed some mojo. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> from maybe. the den of will- weirdness. But we decided to put it under the bridge. And you got down under the bridge and put it there. But you, it was kind of like up, right? It was like up. Yeah, it was like the buttress was was there. And then it was on top of the buttress, kind of tucked in underneath, under the uh, decking mm-hmm. of the bridge. So it, it, if you had went under, just kind of went under to look around, you wouldn't have noticed it. You would have had to, like, really looked around to see it. Like, I didn't make it obvious. Because mm-hmm. I had checked it multiple times. It was still there. Right, right. So... So if one of our listeners got it, good for you. I'm not. We're not yeah. upset about it. Oh no, it. no, absolutely that's, that's not. That's kind of cool. But that's what it is. Yeah. If you found this spring, <laughs> yeah. So maybe someone has the pandemonium spring, or maybe the water. I you know I don't remember a time the water got up that high, but maybe during a bad storm or something. Circles around you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't think about that. The circles around you with yeah. the spring. Yeah. I didn't even think about that connection. Wow. 
Weren't we having spiral th- stuff going on we, at, at that time too? I we think. were getting spiral stuff, yeah. Yeah. With snail shells. Circles and... around you. I don't. It, I don't know. Wow. I think I had put a piece of quartz in there from somewhere yes, too. Yes. Yep. From was it from here or from? It was either here or Michelle or someplace so, like someplace, that. Yeah. And it and yeah. that was gone too. So that everything I had put there was gone. So a little tip to so these places that we talk about. We do usually leave things around. So if our listeners go there and, and you find our quote unquote gifting areas, you know, that's what, you know, maybe, maybe you want to leave something else in, in its place. But if you find our stuff, go, you, you're, you might get something meaningful like the spring. So it's a little, uh, little hunting, uh, Trip, yeah. you know. We'll have to we'll have to start like little cache things or whatever. Yeah, yeah, like geocaches, <laughs> strange familiar caches. So that, I thought that was cool. I was I was like not disappointed that was gone. No. Hopefully somebody got it and they know what it is, or that maybe they just found out what it is. But that was kind of cool. All right, part three. We're going back to the witch tree, and we do a ghost box session there. Probably. Why not? S box. Scanning. FM. I think you press the that button to get the scan. There it goes. Yeah. Might be scanning too fast. No. Okay. It's just waiting. It's stopping on the signal. I think it's on where your hand is. On the side. There's your volume, I think. There, I just slowed it down. Okay. That spe- it slows it down, that speeds it up. Yeah, I always forget what the different buttons are for. You got signal? Hold on. All right, let's try it. All right. Is there anybody here that wants to talk to us tonight? We're standing by the witch tree and we're doing a... How we see. How we see what? How do you see? I promise. What do you promise? How we see, I promise talking here yes you are we want one night you want one night you no no you did me you said we who is we what is we no You don't want to answer? Who is we? Tell me who we is. No more. Okay, as Chad's doing this, I just saw a really big shadow move through the woods. Like, it looked like a shadow. But it was big. Didn't look like it had mass. It looked like a a shadow. Really like a shadow. Reflect. What reflects? No. So you don't want to tell me what you are, what we, you said we. You don't want to tell me what that is? Who who we refers to? Or, or what? I'm not getting anything else. Yeah. It's just like, it's yeah. not picking s- signals. Cut it for now. It just kind of... Yeah, we can we can try AM in a second, but while you were doing that, right through here, I saw a big shadow move across oh, there. Oh, that's weird. And it looked like a shadow. It didn't look like a... Like a 
like a full figure or, or right, just it just shadow. looked like a shadow moved right across there the point where I looked up there to see what could have crossed in yeah, front that was my next question did somebody cross up over there I mean they'd have to be in front of the lights right yeah <laughs> human shaped shadow yeah or, or like, whoa, like, like how upright. tall tall <laughs> very very tall that's so weird yeah like you and me and, and half again tall. Well, that's like that big one I saw go across the, the trail that one day. Over there. Yeah, it was real tall. Did that look like a shadow or did that look like a like a, a form? Like, it like had a black form. form. Yeah, this yeah. this actually just looked like... I'm trying to see if I can make a shadow go... I can't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, we'd have to almost... Yeah. You'd have to be over there. But it looks like... It looked like... Like if you look at our shadows there it well, looked that's like moonlight yeah that, that's not that light over there is not from the right lights over there that's moonlight that side over there so it would have to oh pass, true enough it would have to pass on the other side of you near the creek yeah i was fa i had my 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 uh, eyes closed yeah so i didn't see anything moving because i usually close my eyes to but th it didn't look like a an owl it didn't look like it and it, it looked like it was on the ground but it just looked like a shadow and just went right that's across weird. there did you get anything? It seemed like whatever it was, if it was communicating, it didn't. It wasn't. Didn't want to tell us too much. It was know? just kind of like I kept getting. But, I had heard no a couple times. Yeah. And then I couldn't quite hear some of the words. Because it said we something. I forget exactly what it yeah. said. We we something and and I was like, well, who's we? And then it came. Then it came back with one of the no's. I think and at then, that point. And then I just lost all the signals. It just was like nothing but static. I wasn't getting anything. Yeah. Direct. See, I can see my shadow a little bit there. Well, stand there and look there once. Just stand there. Uh, now, see, my shadow's only as tall as yours. Yeah, this was <laughs> up. It would have to be bigger than that. Yeah. Yeah, what I saw across the, the trail that time was, like, broad, tall. Mm -hmm. This was... This had some height to it, but it looked just like a shadow. It didn't like, so didn't make a sound, you know. <laughs> if if it was making sound, you would have gotten a tap on the shoulder. <laughs> and I've seen shadows cross over there too before, you know, not actual black form, but like shadows. Yeah, yeah. Quick, was this moving fast or did it? How fast did it move? Like uh, if this is my if this is my walking stick, about that quick. About that, yeah, about that. Faster than a human would move through the woods, you know, through that brush, anyway. Uh, yeah, to cast a shadow, it would have had to have been over there. Yeah. That's odd. Huh. Well, I say we go over the bridge and do one over there. Okay. Sounds good. Since we did one here. Sounds good. Unless you want to try AM here real quick. We can. I mean, it's up to you. Try to remember how to switch to AM. I mean, stick brush there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I still can't believe them sirens. That's just insane. I know. I know. Maybe we'll try to remember how to switch it to AM. That's all. Yeah. That's FM. I think it'd be M. I think. Scanning AM. There you go. Okay. All right. I'll try it once more on AM frequency. Can you hold that for me a minute, please? Yep. yep. Actually, this just might be it because I'm feeling tired. Okay, no worries. I'm good with that. This tires me out. Hit that button when you're ready. This one? Yep. That one? Yep. Alright. Well, we're going to try this one more time. Anyone, anything, any entities here that want to talk to us. You said we before. 
Sounds like that means more than one. Be interested in talking. Like to speak to us. We're here. We're listening. Nothing. Nothing. Let's call it then. There was a thump back in there. Did you hear that? I did not. Interesting. How far back do you think? Uh, estimating. I don't know. Like a, but not hollow like that. So right, like right. More, like, more solid than that. A cup thump. Remember in that direction. That's where I saw the shadow. So what if we come in through? where the forerunner is, it's like a field and come in around the back of it. I'm game to try. Let's, let's try that once. Instead of freaking... I'm not following game show around tonight. Yeah, I'm with you. It's just a real one quick thing. It was like as if you had a more solid stick like that. Yeah. That's what I heard. Huh. But more lower. Like it was a bigger, heavier thump. Definitely a game trail there. Yeah, it's definitely it. It was over in this direction. Yeah. Oop, that was funny. Scared to grab it. <laughs> That's a tall fence. Out. Yeah. It's okay. Not, not a rabbit. <laughs> oh, there's a fence here. Okay. I was trying to see if there's a way to get up. Because uh, when you go back in there, it's <coughs> up. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? There's yeah. a field above there. I was trying to see if we can enter in from the back. But there's a fence there. See it? Yep. Right there. Yeah. Go down and see what the game trail looks like. Yeah, that was weird though. That it was just a mouse, just one quick thump. I hope you got it. Uh, the recorder was running, so hopefully. So now I just heard a big movement back in there. Hear it? Yeah. Yep. But this is louder. Like somebody pushed a big tree over or something. So you heard that too? Yeah, yep. I feel like I'm playing games with us right now. Yeah. Wanna follow this? Yeah, we're, in, oh, we're under the same mindset. Car door. Okay. I'd say this is. This is all field, so we're up above. What I heard was over, the thump was over there, and then what we heard was almost in this fence throw out in the field out there. Where's that going? Down towards the creek. Actually, it's a, it's definitely crushed down. Yeah. Speed trail, for sure. There's a set of eyes right there. See it? You just see it, you see a faint set of eyes. It just turned like the tip of my light. Uh, I'm not catching it. Uh, it was, it's a deer. Like I saw it said two eyes. Yeah. Looks like a deer anyway. <laughs> was it a knot deer? <laughs> oh jeez. My headlamp was like right on the edge of You see the edge of my headlamp telescoped out? Uh huh. So it was out there. Turn yours off now. Okay. So it doesn't, doesn't kill me. It was like right in there. So it had to have been at least this tall. Yeah. Based on how tall this scrub is. Yeah. Do you want to keep going or not? It's up to you. 
don't know how much we want to fight through this stuff. I'm seeing here, I yeah, that's what I'm don't want. I'm just gonna call that one Yeah. See that drops off and it's like a little bit of a drop off or a bank. Right. It goes down into the uh, woods. Yeah. But what we heard was not a deer. No, no. It was too big for that. You need to get like a big giant spotlight. <laughs> Would you hear something? Ah, that's just the way the voice is reflected. I thought they were coming from behind us. I thought there were people back in the woods or something, but it's just up here. They just. All right, Tim. What do you think? Done? I think we're done enough for now. I need to frost a little bit, anyways. Yeah, me too. I'm getting a little chilly. So the major thing in that was me seeing the shadow while you were doing the ghost box. I think you said in the recording you had your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. I typically close my eyes. Yeah, and I'm I'm behind you. I may or may not even been facing the same direction as you. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm you know just looking around. Not so much there because it's not deep in the woods. You know, yeah. it's more like if we're in uh, Camp Michaud or something. I want to have eyes. In all yeah, directions. if it was like Camp Michaud, my eyes would be open. Yeah, or you know even here but this i mean i've never seen a shadow person so i don't know what shadow people look like this looked like a shadow like if you can imagine just like a shadow going across the leaves you know what i mean like like a shadow a big bulky shadow very of something it was something upright yeah i'm not gonna say it was bigfoot or anything else it just looked like a big bulky shadow but it came across the leaves or the brush or you know, I don't think there was many leaves out, but, you know, I could see it go across and I turned around and looked for it. And after we were done the ghost box session, I'm, you know, trying to explain where it was. And, and this was at night, too. This wasn't like yeah during the day. I think the only lights we really had were from the uh, the lights that are yeah, on yeah, where um, Saks Bridge is. Yeah, everything behind us on Saks Bridge or, and a kind of across the creek there, which the creek is quite wide there because I have a little dam. Yeah. It really widens out there. I, like I said, I've never seen a shadow person. This wasn't blacker than black, to my knowledge. Like, it just looked like a shadow, you know? That was odd. Yeah. But, uh... Maybe you should tell everybody where we're at right now. <laughs> yeah, so... Oh, it's a dog, all right. Yeah. But it was a weird little... It was a weird little dog. So we, we are... The, the particular place we're at in Hex Hollow is the stack of rocks that I found off trail where I ended up leaving the little bottle of alcohol and thereafter had the beheaded groundhog and everything else. So, yeah, we're, we're not just hanging out at the picnic table at Hex Hollow. We're in, a, <laughs> we're in the woods. A, a place of meaning here. You heard a knock afterwards as well. Yeah. And we ended up going back in the woods a little we bit We were trying further. to find where the shadow was to yeah. see if we could get around behind it. Yeah, we came back around. And it didn't really work out for us. No. I don't know what it was. I I had almost forgotten about it until I listened to it before. I was like, oh yeah, that was that was really... I, like, I forgot about it until I listened back. And when I was listening, I was like, oh crap, that's right. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, did he tell me? And then we discussed it. Yeah. But that's similar to what I saw across the trail there. I remember I've seen numerous things like that cross the, mm -hmm. cross the road or well, the, trail the, there the at one, by Eisenhower. The one you saw when we were interviewing those two guys, the two ghost hunter guys, you said that ha seemed like it had more of a form. It was less like a like a shadow. Yeah, it was, it was just like, like a big black dark, form. Black form. It wasn't yeah. like a formless shadow. It had like a shape of yeah, I mean, this something looked, big and bulky. You could see a head and shoulders. Yeah. This looked... That. Like that, but flat like a shadow. You know what I mean? It didn't yeah. look like it had any form or yeah, this, bulk. Yeah, this was more, what I saw was more distinct mm -hmm. from the night, if that makes any sense. So I keep telling people I've never seen a shadow person. I still don't know if I have or not. I've seen a shadow. I don't know what this was. I really don't know what this was. It, you know, it had humanoid form, but it was big and bulky. I'll say that. But I don't know what it was. I don't know what cast it. I was looking around to see if... Like, it wasn't like an owl flying between the light. 
and us or anything like that. And there that. was no it, other people there that night no, either. No. So was it wasn't like it there. was somebody like standing by the light and it was cat. It was, we were deep enough in the woods it wouldn't have. Yeah. Cat. There would have been nobody standing by sacks and it casting a shadow on us. Yeah. So the ghost box session, I thought it was interesting. It kind of just cut off. It was strange how it just was. It was a lot of, a lot of no's coming through the, the yeah. box. A lot of. The, the one thing that says, we want one night, you know, no. And then you, no, 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 no more. It was just kind of a lot of yeah. But when negativity. I talked, <laughs> when I talked about the shadow, because I, you know, I'm quietly, during the middle of the ghost box session, I make a note. It's like, I just saw a shadow move across. When I say that, the ghost box said, reflex, no. Huh. When around the time of the shadows, so I don't know if that means anything or not, but it's interesting. Yeah, interesting. It's just an interesting piece. Yeah, and I remember how it just cut off, like it just kind of, like I said, I heard nothing anymore. Yeah, yeah. And were... we even, I think we even switched frequencies. Yep, we switched, to... and we really weren't picking anything up. And once again, this stuff, like just so little behind the scenes editing stuff, there might be. 30 seconds or more between the time I ask a question and the time you, you get an answer. Yeah, it's not it's not like instantaneous yeah, answer. I, I trim it down just so there's not a... I mean, sometimes we get it. But so, yeah. Right. And honestly, I don't even know what you're asking, so I don't even know until I listen back. I mean, sometimes I don't even know the context of what of what I'm seeing. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even remember everything I said. Yeah. Oh, which yeah. Which is bizarre. It's, it's but difficult. When I'm doing that, I'm just listening mm-hmm. and just... I just repeat what I hear. I don't, I'm not necessarily trying to remember it or put it, I'm not trying to put it into any context. Right. Well, often afterwards you'll say like, did it make any sense? And I'll be like, well, there'll be a couple of things I can't really remember too well either. Cause I'm in the mm-hmm. middle of just asking questions and just trying to be present. And it's, it's usually when I go back to listen that I go, Oh, there, there is something. Yeah. There. I, see, I don't try. I, when, the reason I just listen and repeat is I don't want to put any context on it. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to be a, as objective yeah as possible exactly and i'm not even really thinking like i'm mostly i'm just listening and i'm just repeating what i'm saying and i've talked about this before then this is just my theory but my my theory the only way ghost box can work in my mind so it's either complete audio pareidolia we're making something and nothing i absolutely love that, that that's possibility. possible anything's possible really it's our subconscious influencing what's coming through i allow that that's to me that's very interesting and probably no less cool than something else but if it is something other i just imagine them sitting outside of time or at least are the way we experience time and they're able to sort of listen ahead in a sense and they know the ghost box is going to be here 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 and they say okay well i can use this word that this this jockey saying I can use this word from this song and this word from this ad and make a kind of answer but they're limited they don't have unlimited answers you know what I mean no, so it, that's why you get these have, indirect it's kind of like scra- having scrabble tiles right so yeah. you can take bits and pieces and put something together and kind of get a word or kind of get a, a sentence yeah yeah so that's why I think you get these like things that that sort of mean something and they're very ambiguous yeah yeah sometimes you get direct hits like i think some of those ghost box sessions we did for the witch cloud were very direct and very pointed and and almost like a conversation i think they were quicker responses too weren't they some were um okay i I don't know that's why i'm asking yeah like like i was saying a lot of times i'm trimming that just so somebody doesn't have to listen to 30 or 45 seconds of just nothing while Mm -hmm. they're waiting for the answer i'll trim that out sometimes and just make it shorter just for the listener's sake. Yeah, I don't know what that was. That was a very interesting ghost box section. It it ended when it ended, like you said, but stuff's just stopped coming through. And we went back to Suicide Bridge afterwards. Our typical back and forth. <laughs> Walking the route. By the way, Suicide Bridge, for those who haven't listened to The Witch Cloud, run and go listen to The Witch Cloud. But Suicide Bridge and Eisenhower Bridge are... The same thing. Yeah, it's the same thing. So the Suicide Bridge is kind of like the local name for it. The, the local spooky name for it, and Eisenhower Bridge is the proper name. So we go back to Eisenhower Bridge, do another ghost box session there. So we are... Back on Eisenhower Bridge, aka Suicide Bridge. Trying a ghost box session here one more time. 
Chad is uh, once again being the medium or the person with the headphones on if you don't want to be fancy about it and I'm asking questions so here we go is anybody there anybody want to talk to us anybody at all anyone or anything it's a hundred what is a hundred I the appropriate age yeah are you trying to tell us how old you are what is the appropriate age? It's holy. Lonely. You're lonely here. Have you been lonely without us visiting so often? Are you saying I was correct? Is there anything to the witch tree over by Marsh Creek? Okay. Sweet home. Oh. Do you have a message for us? We haven't been here for a long time. Do you want to tell us anything? Down. To the last fire. Well, tell us more about your home then in the witch tree. Cold. It's cold. <sighs> I'm done. Yeah, not much is coming I through. Can't, I'm, I can't do it anymore. No worries. <sighs> I heard crunch crunch <coughs> over there. Could be could be a deer. Don't know. Also hear voices. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Weird. No, those voices, you know. How many times have we been here we heard voices that we uh, think uh, are approaching and or, they're not. or lights and they never arrive, yeah. I heard that. Yeah. Oh, it's our buddies. Oh, yeah? Right here he is. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that's what we were here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, he's dragging that. Yeah. They're stocking up for the winter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, they're so damn cute. <laughs> Gonna make a code out of you. Oh, I don't do that. <laughs> okay, yeah, Chad. I really, I'm really gonna skin the beaver and make a coat out not of this, not these beavers. Not, not, beavers, not, these, not, guys. not these guys. Not these guys. <laughs> these guys just moved in. I got no interest in hurting them. Wait a little while. Then, <laughs> then, then, then <laughs> fatten them up a bit. <laughs> well, wait, wait there's more, more of them. Yeah, wait till there's more of them. Then you trap some of them. And these guys will be smart. The dumb ones get trapped, and then the the old beavers are harder to kill. Cute little buggers. Look at <laughs> working that like a corn on the cow. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They have opposable thumbs. I think so. It looks like it. The way he's hanging on to that. The size of his tail. Yeah. Yeah, I'm done. All right, no problem. I, I can't do no more. No problem. So now that light I saw, that was a car moving, but it wasn't there. It was more over to this side earlier. Mm. Remember when I said I saw a light? Yeah.
so you were pretty beat at this. You were beat before we started mm-hmm. the second Coast by yeah. Coast. And I rarely see you get like that. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you had had a hard day at work before this or... I don't remember, to be you, honest. Yeah. But I think I was just tired. And, and like I said before, those ghost box sections, they take a lot out of me. Yeah. And we don't typically do two. We don't, usually. You know? Yeah. We're usually pretty much on the same page. When when, I, when one of us is done, the other's usually done. And this night I was... I was you know, I was... Not that I was raring to go. We'd been there for a long time at that point. It was cold. But it's it's unusual for you to call it, you know, before me. But I could tell you were just kind of beat down. Like I was I, done. Yeah. I was definitely done. So the interesting thing in that second ghost box session is there is a crack during it. And at first, I thought, well, maybe it's just the beavers. But it doesn't sound like any of the other noises the beavers are making. And what it sounds like is the kind of cracks we were capturing mm-hmm. before when we were recording the witch and, and this was not a beaver chewing a tree down and it cracking and falling slowly. No, no, this was just a... Like yeah. a quick snap. Yeah, so again, I, from here on out, until the beavers leave, I'm sure whenever we capture a sound, people are just going to say, well, that was a beaver. Maybe, maybe not. It just doesn't sound like the other beaver sounds. You can hear them kind of constantly. You can hear them constantly kind of chewing and... Mm-hmm. And this doesn't sound like that, but I'm not going to argue about it, but there is a crack there, and I'll, I'll go ahead and play that. One thing I noticed, though, in that crack, and you didn't mention it, I, it almost sounded like there was an owl hoot with it. You did say that. I, I have to go back and listen with headphones. I think it's almost like at the beginning of it. I meant to. And it is a, a, sort of a double crack. Like It's like crack, crack. Which, yeah. if you remember back, most of the sounds, the knocks and stuff we would capture on the bridge would always be a loud one followed by a softer one. It would be like, knock, knock. Okay. Yeah, but the second one's a little softer than, than the first. You know, it would be like, clunk, clunk, you know, like that, you know. Yeah, more more like that. Like, uh, If know. we get a knock response, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know where to where to go next. Where to go for 500? Oh, we're getting some thunder. Yeah. Where shall we go for 500? I don't know. I don't I mean, yeah. I'd like to find another spot like that that we could just... Dig into. Ri- r- you know. Yeah. Do some folklore with. Yeah. You know, that one was just so nice because it was semi-close. Yeah, and I think there's more in Gettysburg. You mm-hmm. know, we focus so much on that that we haven't really dug around to some other well, areas there's a lot of old legends in Gettysburg that are older than the battlefield. Yeah. You know, and... Those are the ones might be interesting to go after those. Mm-hmm. So, Chad, I want to thank you for just being part of Strange Familiars. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your research on the Witch Cloud. Because I wrote the book, I think, you know, people think it's my research sometimes. You certainly did as much research as I did for the Witch Cloud, and I said it in the book, and I, I'll say it again. You were there with me every step. At least I've been there, I think, a couple of times since then with Soraya and stuff, but... And when we were doing the research and doing the recording for that, you were beside me every step of the way. And I don't think I could have done it without you. And, and I want to thank you for your help and for being part of Strange Familiars and for being part of the Witch Cloud, like doing everything you did for that. That was awesome. So I'm glad you're, you're here for the sort of anniversary show as well. Yeah. Well, you know, you know I always do more, you know, because this, this is a labor of love. Why? You know, I don't do it for to be famous or anything like that because god knows i'm not getting famous <laughs> if you think you're going to hang out with tim and get famous it's not going to happen but no i do it because you're my friend well, you know and i enjoy it you well, know thank you so much and that's just, that's why we why i do it the witch cloud definitely wouldn't have happened without you so that's huge and like i said here we are doing an anniversary show and who knows you know we're not done with it we'll go back there but i think we need to find new stuff to dig into yeah well. and and i that's some kind of eager for the next big project like that. Uh, we'll find it. That was definitely fun, you know. A lot of work, a lot of work, but definitely fun. All right, Chad. I'll see you in the woods. All right. See you later. This is just a reminder that. I will be giving a talk along with Maxim Furyk, author of Coal Region Hoodoo, this Saturday, June 17th, at Redland Community Library. That's 70 Newberry Commons, Edders, Pennsylvania, 
1-800-273-17319. You can go to yorklibraries.org slash events to register or call 717-938-5599. I think I asked you this before. I think I, I maybe asked you this at episode 300, Allison. And I was thinking about this the other day. I have an idea what you're going to say. And then I, I have a sort of argument against it if you say what I think I'm going to say. <laughs> so you've pre-planned the argument based on your assumption of what you think I'm going to say. Yeah. So the best way for me to get out of the argument and win the ar- argument is to circumvent your expectation of what I would say. Yes. And tell me you don't do this constantly. And now you now you know that because I know that I'll do that, that you'll have already thought of something you can say to what I will circumvent. No, I haven't thought that far. <laughs> that's giving me way too much credit. <laughs> this is like extended rock, paper, scissors. Yeah, that's, that's way too much credit. Okay, go ahead. Do you feel your opinions towards the stuff that we generally talk about? I'm not talking about the historical episodes, mm-hmm. but the more... Uh, kind of stuff we talk about here on Strange Familiars. Mm -hmm. Do you feel your attitudes and opinions about that have changed over the course of doing Strange Familiars? Yeah, and I think it probably depends on the individual story. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I think the delivery for me is the part that is the most convincing. Mm -hmm. So I think that people that seem the most genuine tend to sway me the most. Mm -hmm. People who I feel like don't have a particular, um, I don't want to say agenda, but like people who just sort of seem to have a fantastic experience kind of in an anomalous kind of way and just kind of didn't really know that other people had that shared experience till someone told them about it or something. Mm -hmm. And just those stories, I think, are are move me in in a way that... So do you feel you're, you're generally more open to the idea of strange stuff happening? I'll say this. I used to think that people were probably making things up for the sake of mm-hmm. um, whatever reason they might they might be making things up. Now I think that there's there are experiences that some people might flip to a particular lens and other people might flip to another lens. Kind of like, you know, when you're at the mm-hmm. eye doctor and you're like, better here or here. Mm-hmm. And some people are like, oh, definitely the first one. And then the other, some people are like, oh, no, the second one looks clear to me. And I think that I used to discount the fact that they were viewing anything at all. Mm -hmm. And now I just think that maybe the way that um, I would view it or five different people would view it would be through different lenses. Okay. And so we're just kind of trying to interpret a shared experience through different lenses. Because I think some people would take something that might be something that they would consider deeply spiritual and someone might look at it through a particularly religious or spiritual bent and other people might look at it as like um, just um, another affectation of humanity, or some people might look at it and not ascribe like any kind of spiritual thought to it, and the same thing could have happened to all the same mm-hmm. people. And so I don't, I no longer discount the fact that things happen. I discount perhaps the interpretation, or not discount it, but I understand that there are different lenses from which you can view the same event. Okay. All right. So I'll tell you what I thought you were going to say. Okay. I thought you were going to say, no, I'm still the same. Because you've, there is the value you place on consistency of character. Yeah, yeah. My argument against that was going to be like, no, I think you have changed. And I think what changed you mm-hmm. was you also have a compassion for people. And I think it was that compassion for other human beings that allowed you to change, that allowed you to start seeing, wait, this person really was affected by this. Yeah, yeah, because I don't think that there's ever too much to gain by discounting people and they're they're genuine if they're if they're genuinely trying to explain something that happened to them mm-hmm. uh, there are people that are just for whatever reason tellers of tall tales sure and, yeah. for, and it goes anywhere from that that sort of benign like i like to to tell a yarn to um people who just are um who just lie, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or or exaggerate beyond um, the the bounds of just like a good storytelling, and just lie, and you know people have reasons for doing it, and, but very 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 rarely 
and I overhear almost every interview you do, mm-hmm. I can probably count on one hand the amount of stories I I listened to and thought that was entirely made up. That's interesting because at some point someone contacted me and they work for a casino. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were a blackjack dealer or something, but they said they had gone through extensive training to tell when people are lying. So you could tell when people were bluffing, right? Yeah, or or like, do people have a tell? Exactly. And he said there are certain things people do when they speak that he could pick out right away. Mm-hmm. And he said, this, this is probably 200 episodes ago, mm-hmm. if not more, this guy contact. But he said, I've only ever heard, and I think he said one or two at that time. Mm-hmm. He said one or two of the people, your callers, were liars. And he said, do you want to know who they were? And I said, no, I don't want to know. Mm-hmm. I don't. But I thought that was interesting because, you know, at that point, it was like 2% or something, mm-hmm. right? Very interesting. That's an interesting thing like for someone like that to say. And I would guess that that percentage would remain, right, mm-hmm. throughout. Like I, I don't think most people have anything to gain from making making something up, you know, so. No, I don't. Yeah. I think it takes a lot of, maybe courage isn't the right word, but a lot of, well, well, just to share anything you might be potentially vulnerable about does take some courage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whether it's you know, public speaking or <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah, you know, and you're just talking to a stranger about something that you don't know how they might react or mm-hmm. or how seriously they might believe you. Yeah, yeah, and I think you know, especially lately, I've become aware that we're really adding to this canon of experiences mm-hmm. that people have done, and and whether this is looked at as a collection of folklore, you know, hundreds of years in the Mm -hmm. future, if people can listen to this, if this is, you know, a collection of folklore or, you know, adding to, I don't think we ever get to solve the other, but adding to our understanding of the Mm -hmm. other, whatever that is, I've begun to see that like all these different accounts, like people can go back now and listen to it. Not only is there a story of strange familiars, I think, you know, it's not a hard timeline. Yeah, it's not a linear thing, definitely. But, But they're, they're, there are themes that run through strange mm-hmm. familiars. Not only can people follow that, but you can also start to put these accounts together and you say like, oh, look, this one is very much like that one. And they mm-hmm. have this in common, you know, which is different from this one. But, you know, that one, it's it's very interesting. I think you could make a very interesting uh, Pepe Sylvia. <laughs> Venn diagram. With yeah. all this stuff. Yeah. So it's been an awesome ride. I mean, I can't express how lucky I feel to be a part of this and – excited for the next 400 episodes. Yeah, let's see what we can do. As Chad and I were talking, we're looking to get into new stuff, you know, find new things to research, dig into new stuff. Maybe there'll be another witch cloud. Seek yeah. out strange... I was, just, I was thinking the Star Trek theme, and now I can't think of <laughs> what their, their bold missions. Strange are. new worlds I'll and... Seek out new lands and... I don't know. I haven't watched any yeah. reruns of Star Trek in a while. There was a time when I would have known it, mm-hmm. but we didn't have cable growing up. So. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 400 episodes in the can. <laughs> Not going to do a curiosity of the week this week, but I will remind everybody about our Etsy shop. Shop name is Lost Grave. One word. If you go there, you can find all kinds of Strange Familiars related stuff, t-shirts, stickers, patches, and more. You can find all of my books, including... The new art book, Elzik's Farewell. You can find some of my music there, Stone Breath and some of my solo music. You can find artwork. My artwork's there, originals and prints. Allison has antique and vintage photography there as well. And shopping at our Etsy shop helps support the show. Again, the shop name is Lost Grave. If you type in Strange Familiars, you'll see our stuff come up on Etsy. There's always a link to our Etsy shop in the show notes as well. I want to thank everybody for listening. Every single one of you. 400 episodes in. What a journey. What a fun, incredible, rewarding experience this has been. I'm excited to continue. I'm excited to see what we can do in the future. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And we'll be back soon with more. Strange Familiars is a production of Dark Holler Arts. Intro and background music is by Stone Breath. If you want to hear more or purchase music, you can go to stonebreath.bandcamp.com. We also have 
Elzik's Farewell, the new art book, is there at Bandcamp, as well as the new Stonebreath CD, Greys and Orphans. Entity Drift is back in print as a CD as well. You can check it all out at the Stonebreath Bandcamp page. Again, that's stonebreath.bandcamp.com. Strange Familiars is on Facebook, facebook.com slash strangefamiliars, where you can join the Strange Familiars gathering group. We're on Instagram, at strangefamiliars, one word, and you can find us on the web anytime at strangefamiliars.com. On the tree, he waits for me. 